Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you about the composition of functions. The composition of functions, f and g, is defined as this notation. It's two different types of notation that mean the same thing, f of g of x. So you're putting x into the function g, and then you're taking that output and putting it into the function f. So remember that a function is like a machine. So look at our image. We start with an input x. It goes into our first function, our innermost function, g. And the output we get is g of x. With a composition, we take that output, g of x, and it's our input into our next function, f, and we get the output f of g of x. Let's look at a couple of examples. Here we have two functions, f of x and g of x. Example one, we're finding f of g of eight. Remember you start with the innermost function, g of eight here. So evaluate g of eight. We're substituting eight in for x in function g. So that is the square root of two times eight the square root of 16, which is equal to four. We have the output, g of eight, which is four. We take that and we put it into the f function. So f of four is what we need to find. In f of four, we're substituting four into our f function. So we have four cubed minus four times four. Four cubed is 64 minus 16, which is 48. So we can say f of g of eight is equal to 48. Now order matters. Let's look at what happens when we find g of f of eight. So start with the innermost function, f of eight. So you're starting with a function f, Substituting in the eight, eight cubed minus four times eight. Eight cubed is 512 minus 32. That would be 480. We have f of eight. We substitute that in to our g function. So we're finding g of 480. So we're taking the square root of two times 480, or the square root of 960. The square root of 961 is 31, so this is approximately 31. So we know that g of f of eight is equal to, we'll say approximately equal to 31. That brings us to question three. Is f of g of eight equivalent to g of f of eight? No, this is a big fat no. Order matters. You have to start with the innermost function and evaluate outwards. So 48 is never equal to 31. Okay. Here, we need to find f of g of x, and then we need to write the domain of that new composition in interval notation. So here, we don't have values for x. We're simply creating the, a combined function, a composition. To do that, remember that this format, f of g of x, is the same as this, f of g of x. I prefer the second notation better. It's easier for me to see that I'm taking the function g and substituting it into my function f. So we're taking our function g, square root of x minus one, and we're substituting it in for every x of our f function. So that composition is two over the square root of x minus one minus Four. We have the composition, so now we need to 
identify the domain and write it in interval notation. To do that, we start with that innermost function. So the g of x. We're looking at this square root of x minus 1. Are there any restrictions on the domain? Remember the domain are the x values. So what x values are not allowed? Well, we can't have negatives, right? We can't take the square root of a negative. So our restriction is that x has to be greater than or equal to 1 for that g of x function. Now we know that, we also have to look at the f function. So a restriction on a rational expression is that the denominator cannot be 0. So we know because of g of x, x has to be greater than or equal to 1, but we also know that that denominator, x minus 1 minus 4, cannot equal 0. We can add 4 to both sides. The square root of x minus 1 cannot equal 4. If we square both sides, we have x minus 1 cannot equal 16. Add 1 to both sides, and x cannot equal 17. So you may need a number line to start for some of these. You know our first restriction is that we can go from 1 to infinity, right? We can't be anything less than 1. But then we throw in this other restriction of 17. So if 17 is here, we can't go to 17. So we can get to 17 and we can be just past 17. See how that shows us our domain? So our domain is going to be from 1 to 17. We can include the 1, but we cannot include 17. Or it goes from 17 to positive infinity. In our last example, we're given the composition and we're asked to find two functions, f and g, that could create that composition. So our composition is x plus 7 squared. I always look at the order of operations to give me some sort of hint as to what the two functions are. So if I were to evaluate something here, some value of x, my first step would be x plus 7. And then my second step is to square it, right? So x plus 7 was my first step. So that is going to be my innermost function. g of x equals x plus 7. And then my f of x is going to be the thing squared, right? Because if I create the composition f of g of x, I would be taking this value for g of x and substituting it in for my x in the f function. So look at your order of operations, figure out how you would have to evaluate a certain value of x, and that'll give you some hints as to what your composition could be. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you'll check out some of my other math videos.